What is going on, everyone? Mike O back with another episode of Hobby Talk. As always, appreciate you tuning into the show. We're approaching the Midsummer Classic, signifying the middle of the 2018 baseball season. That means we've also reached the midpoint of the 2018 baseball card year. Today, I'll be joined by Mike and Luke Coy, a father and son duo who collect cards together. They break boxes together. They also make YouTube videos together. Their YouTube handle is Up North Collectors. I recommend you check out their channel. Really fun, really informative. I'll be talking to Mike and Luke today a little bit about all the products that Topps has put out in baseball this season and all the products still to come. There is a vast number of products to be released, so there's a lot to choose from, and we want to give you some thoughts on what you may or may not be interested in and some of our thoughts about the individual sets. Anyway, with all that being said, Mike and Luke welcome to the show yeah thanks for having us yeah thanks a lot we greatly appreciate it and are definitely looking forward to spending some time talking about the 2018 season and the products that have come out yeah the hobby's so fun and when you're having fun time flies it's amazing that we've already reached july we're already a week into july baseball season is more than half over we're approaching the all-star game so when you kind of think about it we're basically at the midway mark of the baseball collecting season as well. So it'll be a, be a lot of fun yeah. to chat about the products and what we've thought about the products to this point. And, you know, there's still plenty more to come. There's a laundry list of stuff to come out. But before we get into uh, specific products, I want to spend a few minutes letting you guys chat a little bit about your collecting, how you got into collecting, what it's like to collect together, and your YouTube channel, which is really... Uh, really emerged over the last year. It's gaining popularity. It's a lot of fun. I always try to uh, promote it to everyone on my channel. Uh, I think the uh, father-son dynamic is really cool. I think you guys do a great job of showing off the cards, talking about the cards, um, giving some thoughts, and really enjoying the hobby. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, we, we uh, have definitely had fun on our channel. We started collecting together back in 2008. I think we bought a box of Topps football cards yeah. a hobby box and we opened up uh the packs together and it just kind of evolved from there 2013 is when we really started buying more yep. product and it was mainly football then and then 2014 i think we started buying a little more baseball yeah, we were and, intrigued by the bowman craze in 2014 with the bryant and the Brave yeah. who back then and that kind of started us in baseball yeah products. and then right and then it just kind of evolved and then we on our channel we do uh, all different kind of sports, but mainly football, baseball. It's kind of evolved more into baseball than anything else, uh, which brings me back to my roots uh, collecting in the in the early uh, '80s uh, up until pretty much the strike happened in the you know close to the '90s. So um, yeah, we kind of uh, got more into YouTube because we were watching box breaks. We wanted to see what the products look like out there as being kind of new back into the hobby. Uh, so we watch guys like Cards Infinity, Chris Justice there, and uh, Ultimate Box Breaks and Football uh, and Cardsmiths. He does all kinds of breaks and uh, a lot of baseball. So we were, uh, you know, kind of influenced there to, to uh, think about starting a channel. And we started watching the smaller breakers on YouTube, and I really enjoyed that. And we started our channel about 10 months ago. Yeah, and have really had a lot of fun with it, opening the packs on camera and just being able to talk about them. And then meet, we've met a lot of great people on the YouTube community, yeah, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that was one of the things that surprised us the most was not just having a channel sharing, uh, you know, what we're opening with other people, but just to be involved in an actual community was something I think that was a pleasant surprise to us yeah. uh, as we started our channel. It yeah. continues to be one of the main, you know, I think, real kind of fun and joy of doing the channel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's something there's something awesome about being able to share this hobby with so many people, you know, across the country, really across the world. I don't know if you guys have yeah. looked at your analytics at all, but you'll see yeah, people yeah. watching yeah. them overseas and, you know, all over the place. And it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, I think there's a way, I haven't looked at it for a while, but you can br- pull up like a map of the country and see like how many views you have from all yeah, the different, yeah, all 50 yeah, states. Yeah. And it's like, it's there's fun, someone yeah. in Alaska watching me open baseball cards. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, and, you know, the community is great. And really, you know, breaking boxes um, on camera, it it's fun. It can be a chore sometimes because you're sitting there, you know, trying to 
You're trying yeah, to right, open but- the product, enjoy the product, making sure it looks good, making sure it sounds good, making sure you know you're being somewhat entertaining and all that. But when you really do take a look at it, um, there's a real value. You're putting a value out there. It's giving people an opportunity to see what a product, what's in a product, what they can possibly expect from a product. It's really, I mean, I think it's something that's probably helped the card companies quite a bit with products i mean i'm sure it can hurt with certain products as well but sure you know sure. all the guys you mentioned are all people yeah. i've watched as well over the years and you know sometimes if whoever has stuff up first i'll watch the group breaks i'll flip them on if i have time just yep. to see because yep. i want to yep. see what's coming out in that product even though my box you know box or two or whatever you know i have ordered will be coming in in a few days so it's uh it's definitely something that gives back to this community online, but also really people out there. Cause there's a lot of people who watch who don't have, um, accounts. They just search whatever. Maybe they find yeah. people yeah. they like. So, and, and that, that's what we did. Yeah. That's, that's what we did. We did that for years. Really. Yeah. We, we didn't have an account. We yeah. just kind of watched different people and yep. watch the videos and had a lot of fun watching them. Then we'd go out and buy the products if we liked what we saw. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot of products to choose from. So we're going to start chatting about some of them. But real quick, uh, bear with me for a se- for a second because this might take a little while. These are the products that have been released and that are being released that I wrote down. I might have missed one or two, but we have Top Series 1, Tops Heritage, Opening Day, Gypsy Queen, Tops Tribute, Bowman, Bowman Mega Boxes, Tier 1, Pro Debut, Finest, Top Series 2, Stadium Club, Inception, Museum Collection, Definitive, Bowman Platinum, Big League, Archive Signature Series Active Player Edition, Tops Allen and Ginter, Clearly Authentic, Diamond Icons, Tops Chrome, Luminaries, Heritage High Number, Archives, Bowman High Tech, Five Star, Bowman Chrome, Gold Label, Triple Threads, Tops Heritage Minor Leagues, Tops Archive Signature Series Retired, Tops High Tech, 2018 Tops Update, and that doesn't include the Tops Living Set, Tops Now, and all of the uh, online products. So there's plenty of products to choose from. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, it's kind of su- surprising how many products that are yet to release. It's uh <laughs> we're halfway through the uh, you know baseball card uh season. Uh, we sure haven't I don't think hit half of the products that that are supposed to be released. So a lot yeah, to come out. It's crazy, but uh the one thing I will say, you know, part of it is the exclusive licensing and um there's been some chatter. There's There's been some stories that Topps kind of has a a deal in place to extend the contract, but nothing's been officially released. Um, And everyone has different thoughts on that. And I'm all on board with Topps continuing. I I like the, uh, I like keeping it the way it's been. Obviously in the ideal world, we would have uh, some competition. We'd have upper deck and, you know, a few other companies on board, but the reality of the the way things are now is that's not going to happen. That wouldn't happen. It would either be Tops or Panini, one or the other. That's the way I feel about it. That's the way I think it would be. Um, yeah, o- overall, I've really liked what Tops have done in the past couple years with their baseball products, adding a few new ones and just really keeping like Tops Chrome has risen in popularity and now is one of the upper tier products that people love opening. And they've been making other products like that that have been really good. And I feel like they've done a really good job with Yeah, and that was going to be one of my points is, you know, people will get on tops. And what I just read off that list, that's a ridiculous number of products. But the reality of the situation is based on the licensing fees and all the costs, I mean, tops has to put out that many products to be able to turn. And, you know, another complaint you'll get is, you know, the autographs and stuff. And the other reality is, you know, the bigger players, the Hall of Famers, they're going to cost more money to have signed. So that's why you're going to always see these rookies and second year guys in products. And they're going to be, you know, they're going to be in there a little more than maybe you'd like. And it's just unfortunately going to be part of the game, but you know, tops does need to make money to continue the uh, hobby. And uh, to your point, Luke, you know, I think tops has actually done a really good job. Um, You know, people are always going to find things to complain about, but tops has, they've definitely continued to be nostalgic with their products. And you see that with some of their subsets and some of their sets like archives and stuff. They will, they have, they know one of their big selling points is the history of the product and the history of baseball. So they're going to, 
they're going to do a good job with that. They're going to have innovative stuff. You know, Chrome has been really popular, and they're going to make other Chrome products. They know autographs and hits, so they mix it up a little bit. Um, but I, I think overall they've done a really good job. They go out of their way to make most of their products on-card autographs, which for me is very important. Some people don't care. Some people just want anything that's a hit. Um, but I think on-card is is a huge advantage over the, you know, st- sticker, the band-aids, yeah. the signed band-aid dumps, you know, I think are yeah, e- silly. Yeah, even in, uh, even in Series 1 this year and last year, they've had, um, you know, on-card autographs. And I, and I think in the past, some of those have been sticker autos and kind of lower-end guys. So they've, it seemed like they actually up yeah, and those the quality. Yeah, and those probably up the quality for sure. And whenever we go out to buy a PC card, we pretty much always look for the on-card autographs because player actually signed that card, whereas the sticker, they're just signing the sheet and they stick it on the card. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm on-card all the way. Um, You know, every now and then you'll see something where they do an okay job with a sticker, but to me, there's there's not really any examples where, you know, sometimes a sticker auto will look okay, but it would still look better on card. The signature will be bigger, it'll be bolder, it'll look better. So that's what I'm all about. But we've uh, we've chatted for a little bit, so I want to get into uh, get into some of the individual products, and we'll start with 2018 Top Series One. Uh, Mike, you've been uh, you've been collecting for a while. Uh, what do you think about, or what did you think about the new design for 2018 Tops Baseball? Were you uh, are you okay with this new trend the last few years, the borderless Tops flagship cards? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it hasn't. And some people definitely, you know, have been uh, speaking out and saying, you know, they want to go back to the the borders. I guess for for me, it hasn't really bothered me too much. Uh, I like the bordered, but the borderless ones look look halfway decent, in my opinion. And yeah, I think this year's design is pretty pretty good. Some of the parallels are a little hard to uh, to see, uh, like the black parallels. I think those the seem blue. To, uh, yeah, they. They're a little bit hard to see. The golds kind of stick out and the, the pink Mother's Day. But overall, I think the design's pretty decent, a solid design. And I, I liked Series 1 Yeah. overall. Uh, you know, they had a pretty good autograph checklist, had some good good name rookies in there. And then, of course, the checklist for Series 1 Series 2 is huge. So you have, you know, cut autographs to, um, you know, the rookie autographs and some veterans mix in there and patch autos and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Like we pulled a Wade Boggs autograph that was on yeah. the card, and that was really cool. That was like cool. We really Nineteen eighty three design. So, um, yeah, I think it was a it was a solid product, and um, yeah. it'd be nice to see him come back probably at some point with the borders on the cards. But yeah, overall, I, I I agree. I would like to see it mixed up a little bit. I'm all for innovation yeah. and changing things up, but you know, I'd like to go back to borders at one place. I actually would love to see them go back to, um, the full career statistics on the back. I think that's yeah. what actually got yeah. me a little more. Um, yeah. cause that was just always a tops thing. I mean, they did have a few years back, uh, way back. I don't even remember what years. I don't know if it was in the later fifties or in the sixties. They do have a few sets that came out that only had like the last five years, but Right. You know, you always thought of, at least for me, you think of like the 70s, 80s, 90s cards, you know, with that, especially like the guy's yeah. last card and you just see that tiny print that right. you need a magnifying right. glass to see, but it was awesome. And I do get that in today's world, you don't really need that because most kids aren't going to sit there and look for the baseball card. They'll look up a guy's statistics. They're going to, yep. you know, probably just talk to their cell phone and the cell phone's going to tell them. Um, right, right. But for me, I'll even, you know, I go on baseball reference, stuff like that. Like, fantastic website. And they're kind of getting innovative, which, you know, that's okay, too. I don't know, uh, Luke, you're obviously the youngest of the three of us. I don't yes. know if, uh, what are your thoughts on the cards? Do you think, um, like, the Twitter handles and all that stuff, does that, uh, do you I think mean, that appeals it, more to the younger generation? I don't know how into the, all that might, you are, the, but. Some people, some kids are. I mean, the it's the Twitter. M- most kids of my age are not really on Twitter. It's more the Instagram handles. That's I think kind they of have. The, do they have both of them on there? I don't even remember. I think they did. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I want to say that they might have. But uh, that would be a little bigger deal because a lot of kids are on Instagram. Just being able to connect with a player that way. I know I met some people that have had 
players like message them back and forth on Instagram before, you know, so that's kind of a, that would be a big deal for them. But overall, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. No, it's just a little bonus to put out there, I guess, you know, I guess it's better to have it than not have it. But uh, any, uh, do you have any specific thoughts on a 2018 tops? Like when you look at the design of it, do you, I, I you're, like you're, the design. I do. I did like the borders like back in the 2011, 2012. I like the borders on those products. And I do wish they'd probably go back to borders. But like, I really like like the 83 cards. I think in last year, the 87s, I think they did a really good job making those. And that really helped as a selling point for their products with like the nostalgia of those cards in there. But overall, I thought it was a really nice product. Yeah. And it seems like it's a pretty bright set. I mean, just looking at it, yeah. it just seems like the cards, the, I know some people I've seen, well, we'll get into stadium club lately, but I think this year's stadium club was kind of a standout, uh, which we'll talk more about later, but I saw people kind of complaining about flagship tops because of that. And I was like, well, I think this year's tops has actually been pretty good. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. every now and then they'll have a bad Photoshop job out there or something, but right, right. in there general, I, I think they did a good job with the cards this year. I, I feel like they're bright, bold, really stood out. I, th- I thought it was a really nice product and I definitely thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I feel like every year when the initial, um, the initial kind of leak comes out with the design, the next year's design, I always kind of look at it and I just, I don't know. I don't feel it right away. Right. Like the, right. Originally yeah. when I saw the wave around the uh, logo, yeah. I was kind of like, yeah. Oh, that's going to be terrible. And then you just get used to it so quick and it really doesn't bother me at all at this point. Yeah. You, you wonder what they do when they're, you know, doing mock-ups and then what the reaction is to the people that they show it to. It, obviously it's not so much a, one that makes them recoil and want to start over again. So, yeah, yeah I, I agree. It, it, they do kind of every year look a little bit different, but they have to, and I think to really make the you know products uh, desirable. So, yeah, they did a good job. And I think the the silver packs that you get with the hobby boxes and the jumbo boxes, yeah. those are really a cool addition too that they've done the last couple of years. Yeah, they add a lot more value to cases and boxes with those silver packs, for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, and you can get hits and all kinds of stuff. I want to move on now to one of the more popular sets that comes out every year. It's probably the most popular set among set collectors, uh, Topps Heritage. Topps Heritage fits right in there with how we discussed about Topps, you know, really using um, the nostalgia to their advantage. Uh, it's it's always a beautiful set. Uh, this year featuring the 1969 design, uh, this was... You know, I think Tops was obviously when the basic set comes out, you're kind of like, all right, cool. The collecting season's here. Baseball's drawing near. Spring training's coming up. But I feel like when Heritage hit this year, that's when the kind of Otani craze started to really yeah. hit. Yes. When you had yeah. the Otani short print, you had the Otani autograph, and, you know, the prices just start going crazy. And that set is always popular. Um, but I feel like this right. year's yeah. was even another step up. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely was. I mean, we we pre-ordered our case uh, when it first when it, when we first could buy it, and it first shot day. it shot up uh, immediately. I mean, you couldn't even get it close to what it was the year before, um, and it just kept going up from there. And then once the Otani stuff was uh, published, that like he was going to be in there, it really went crazy really and. Well. Yeah, the set was really nice. The cards look great. Um, retail was was fun in it. We yeah. we pulled some nice autographs out of retail. Um, yeah, it was it was a real. I think they did a good job yeah. again with Heritage. I had a lot of fun opening Heritage. Heritage is always pretty similar. The design's always different because it's just keeps going a year. Like so, this year was what nineteen sixty eight, sixty nine. I believe sixty nine. Yeah. Yeah. But so next year will be 1970. It just keeps going up, and the short prints are usually the same types. They'll add some new ones and take some away. And but I really like like the on-card autographs in those. Like we got a Devers from that, who's one of our big PC guys, and that card looks really nice. Like that was yeah. a really nice card. And overall, I really like the set with the autographs in there and the relics and the set. The set collecting was fun. It's a yeah. pretty big set, it's so big it's set. Yep. harder to collect. And then the short prints and stuff. 
The one thing that I wasn't a big fan of this year was that most of the short print names were not very good, whereas the year before they had, like, uh, I think Mike Trout and Chris Bryant were both yeah, SPs they were. in that, they and were. Bryce Harper. Yeah. Whereas this year they were all lower-tier names, didn't have any of the real big names as short prints. But overall, I thought it was a really good product. Yeah, and I think the short prints are it, – it's like a fine line to walk because it's – you know, you want like when kids go out there and buy packs, you want them to have a chance to get their favorite players, their Trouts and Chris right. Bryant's. But at the same time, like I agree with you, I was actually just going through like a stack of short prints the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh, these names are brutal. Like, you know, yeah, they are. You don't even know just, some of them. Most they're just would not, have no you know, idea. they're not. There's no one that's like barely in a starting lineup that's right, like filled right, with yeah, relief right. pitchers and stuff it's yeah. weird but i agree i think the product is beautiful every year i think it's a lot of fun um a lot of people who are hit heavy who just like to chase the hits aren't fans of heritage because it is right. it can be tough um yeah. Yeah. i think in your typical case you really usually only see a handful of autographs it's yeah like two it's usually. filled with yeah, relics which yeah. i don't personally love i'm more of yeah. an autograph collector when it comes to that stuff but to me it's just such a fun product to open you mentioned um it being a big set and i think that's amazing like i like getting a whole stack of players yeah. f from yeah. each team i like um i i typically when i open the stuff uh, i will just go through and i'll just randomly pull out cards or players i like and i'll fill up it depends on the product, but maybe one sheet, two sheets, five sheets, whatever. And I just toss them in a binder for that year. Yep. And, you know, I think Heritage is always one of those sets that's just beautiful. Um, I think it's fun to collect. It's really popular with people who seek autographs, who do, you know, go out graphing it for spring training or, um, yeah. you know, major league games too, because the cards always look amazing signed. So it, to me, it's a beautiful set. And I think this year was a huge success. Did you guys pull an Otani? I forget. I know you guys opened a case yeah, and I watched yeah, the got, bunch of breaks. Otani short print uh, action yep. image variation. Yeah, I think it was our, fir our first box of the case. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. Yep. Um, yeah, so we did. And another thing about Heritage we found, because um, we weren't big fans of Heritage at first either. And uh, yes, yeah, so we started opening it and looking at the cards and then finding the resale value, there's actually a lot of value in heritage. If you're into, you know, buying and reselling some of the cards. So compared to some other sets, you can, you can actually, you know, recoup some of your, your costs back. If it's a card, you don't PC or whatever, and you want to sell it. So there's actually a lot of value in yeah. heritage. Yeah. I meant to actually mention that when I was talking about the hits, because a lot of people complain about there not being enough big time hits, but you know, it, it's tough to get an autograph, but there are, you know, you can get them, and I see people get like Nolan Ryan autos out of yeah. hanger boxes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Right. But uh, never happens to me, but I see other yeah. people doing right. it all right. the time. But uh, like you were saying, there's definitely um, value in there. There's value in the short prints, there's value in the yeah. variations, the inserts. I mean, it's a set that people. People go after. They like to put together yeah. the set. They put yeah. together the base set. They put together everything. So yeah. Yeah. people will put together some weird like parallel sets out of that stuff too, where they have like because before like they had the blues. Did they have blues this year, where they uh, they have black blacks. That yeah. was what it was. And people put together like the black team set and stuff like that, or chrome sets. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the chrome refractors are always cool looking too. I w I'm not as big into the. Um, like the hot boxes, the purple refractors. Yeah, but... those are. Yeah, those are. Yeah, they're they're. I guess they're they're fun at least at some level, but yeah. not, well, not this, necessarily the biggest highlight yeah. for us. All right, so after you get that, you kind of start off with that big bang with tops, which you know everyone knows, and like tops release day, you'll see like MLB network and you'll see all sorts of promotion. Yeah. You'll see like random stuff too, like random morning news talk shows and stuff. They'll be opening right. tops baseball cards. So it's right, kind of, right. it's kind of an event. And then heritage is obviously popular in the hobby. Then things will start to slow down a little bit right around opening day. You have the tops opening day set, which is ultimately when you look back at it, it's generally kind of lame. It's basically just a repeat of regular tops. But at the time yeah. I always get suckered into a few boxes. Cause I'm just so hyped up for baseball season. I'm like, Oh, it's something new. Right, and you get right. like, the handful of cards that are basically series two previews. There might be a few like different images, but this yeah. year's 
opening day wasn't bad because you had a Shohei Otani in it while the Otani right. yeah. chase was going. But do you guys get into the uh, opening day at all? We actually, we, we actually do. We, we, we. I don't know how we even got started in it. It was one of the about, first props that we opened. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's cheap. You know, you can buy a blaster box for ten bucks. You get a bunch of cards. Um, we like the the. The, you know, mascot some people, yeah, the mascots, the, yeah, and the food just cards. Kind of a fun and, product. Yeah, they just have just kind of different things. I mean, some of it people would say it's kind of hokey, but um, overall, I think it was uh, this year was for, for the price. Decent. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it is fun. I mean, you can for twenty five bucks, you can buy a you know box. What is it, thirty six packs or something in there? Yeah. And you know, chance to get a hit is very uh, you know very hard to pull a hit out of there, uh, but. It's just fun to open up. Uh, you know, if you do pull stuff. a hit, though, you can do okay because I did pull yes, a Bernie yeah. Bernie Brewer uh, auto this year, okay. and uh, I think I tossed it up on eBay, and I saw they were going kind of high, and someone sent me an offer so quickly, and I was like, "Accept." It was right. like thirty <laughs> bucks or something. I'm like, it's yeah, so silly, that. but it's cool. Yeah, we pulled a Stadium Signatures uh, short variation of Manny Machado. I don't remember what we what we sold it was for. Like sixty or eighty bucks, um, but it yeah. was it was decently rare. But it sold really quick. Too. Yeah, it sold really quick. Yep, yep. So they're they're those uh, people cards chase are hard them. to hit, but they people are out there collecting them. So yeah. So the fourth set that came out this year is to me another example of Tops doing a great job is Tops Gypsy Queen, and yeah. I've always enjoyed Gypsy Queen. I, I think it's another product that can be kind of tough. I've always really yep. liked the look of the autographs. I like kind of that artistic approach to the cards. And I think their on-card autos have always been just unbelievable. So I never opened a ton of it in the past, but I would always buy just cheap autographs like it shows. I'd find decent players that I kind of liked for 3 bucks, 5 bucks the autographs, and I'd always buy them. Um, you know, and I... You know, I've opened some of them over the years and, you know, put together a few sheets. And I always liked the base cards, but I wasn't in love with them. I think this year's are just unbelievable. I think just the way the border, the photos, the, again, with the brightness of the cards, the, they just, they pop. They look great, the base cards. And I actually think they're great for getting autographed as well. I'm yeah. trying to get, like, the entire Philly set signed. I still need Odubel Herrera, who's kind of a tough, tough one to grab, but... uh. You know, I think they're great for getting autographed as well. I just think they're great for binders. So I was actually, I really enjoyed Gypsy Queen this year. You know, I didn't do incredible with autographs or any of the hits, but I just think they're awesome looking cards. Yeah, this year I really liked the design. It was actually one of my more favorite base designs. I really liked it. And then I thought the insert sets were cool. I was actually kind of glad they got rid of minis before, like, uh, I don't know if they had them last year, but couple years ago they had minis like in every pack those were kind of annoying and didn't really have a whole lot of value but and i also like they used to have four hits where you'd get two autos and two relics i think i wasn't a huge fan of the relics either but i really like the two auto setup with the really nice looking base cards and all the on-card autographs look really sweet and another thing that i think is great is some of the parallels i mean some of the parallels to me are silly like the no name plate like yeah. I, I don't know I, I can't get into them but like the black and white um parallels are incredible looking this year yeah, they look awesome. awesome um so i was a big fan of them I, I really think tops did a really good job with the product this year i like the veteran players and not the veterans like the hall of fame players the retired yeah, short yeah. prints yeah. i think they were a nice touch i think they're really cool as well yeah, they, yeah, it was a good set overall. We we didn't go too crazy on that one. No. We we never really have, but we've always bought a, a little bought bit a, of it, a little bit of the product, and yeah, the you know once again the on card autographs and uh, the yeah I like that the the design of Gypsy Queen is always a nice nice look, and it's kind of refreshing change from the other stuff that's already come out earlier in the year. So yeah, it's usually different than pretty much anything that you'll see for the rest of the year. Yep. Yeah, and I love, again, how Tops does. They do such a good job with the nostalgic stuff, the artistic-looking stuff, the new stuff, the high-end stuff. They just they mix things up a little bit. And uh, Tops Tribute always comes out early in the year. That is just, to me, always an incredible set. I've rarely... I don't. I think this year might have actually been the first time I ever opened any of it. I've 
bought some singles here and there, but I always like looking at them. It's just one of those things. In the past, I think I'd always miss out on them, and the price would shoot up by like a hundred right, bucks right, after yeah. like it being out a week. And I don't even know. I think this year's is pretty expensive again. But uh, I actually did okay with it when I opened some this year. But they just Tops does a great job with tribute. I mean, they just have so many great looking cards. Um, you know, when you have a multi uh, a product that's a couple hundred bucks, it's always a crap shoot for uh, lack of a better yeah. word, but right, right. it's still a, a great looking product. I don't know if you guys have ever uh, collected any of the tribute. I don't remember seeing you guys break any, but yeah, we've we never opened it. It's we don't usually go a, for those <laughs> 200 plus products, but we do. I buy, I, one of my collections is I buy a lot of the higher end base cards of Red Sox players. It's one of the things that I'll love to do at the national where I'll buy like the triple threads and the tribute. If I can find some of the even more expensive ones, I'll try to find those national treasures and stuff. But those cards look really awesome this year. I really yeah, like did. the design. Some of like the shadow box autographs and those. Oh, they're are awesome! Really sweet. Yeah, they. Yeah, we we bought in a couple breaks. Um, you know, or a cheaper way to get the product and uh, getting them back. You know, from the breakers, it was fun to see them and what they look like in person. And definitely to hold it in your hands a little different than seeing it on camera. And yeah, they're they're beautiful cards. It's, what's interesting is that some of the uh, you know secondary values on them aren't all that high. And I don't know why. Maybe the the collect you know the collectability of them isn't uh, you know the demand for them isn't as high. But um, they're they're just beautiful cards. And I I don't understand why they're yeah, some it, don't they're one, demand some a of the, higher price tag. Yeah, you know, they're some of the better looking product that tops puts out they're one of my more favorite yeah. looking autographs. i think design. some of those expensive products people are obviously priced out of being able to open the product right and then yeah. i think because of that they think they can't afford anything from the product and they almost don't look into it because right. it is really uh, weird how sometimes you can get get an amazing deal on some of those beautiful higher end cards and then you'll see like a cheaper product card uh, you know, of the same player go even higher. And yeah. it's like, yeah, that doesn't yeah. make a whole lot of sense, but you know, the product, this is, this next product is not generally one of my favorite products. I respect the product and I think it's something that's awesome to go back on years later, but the craze for 2018 Bowman was absolutely outrageous. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. You had it, you know, I guess most of it started with the whole, you know, who was it? I can't even remember offhand now. Um, the freaking big company offering, you know, making the offer oh, on the yeah. Otani one. Oh, yeah. Well, right, right. Yep. Yeah, and the, the yep. from there, it was ridiculous. I mean, people were running in, in and out of every Target within like 50 square miles and like buying right. every pack, every, every blaster pack. box, yeah. every hanger box. You know, the prices on the freaking hobby boxes are outrageous. The jumbos, just absolutely insane. Uh, I thought that this year's design was okay. I wasn't in love with it. Um, I don't get as much into Bowman because I just, I don't know. I can't get into the prospects as much until these guys, yeah. you know, make their yeah. way to the major leagues. Um, but did you guys uh, fall into the uh, the Bowman craze this year? Oh, uh, we, uh, we sort did of. sort of not, not hobby wise. We stayed away from it. It was just, I mean, by the time we could even try to do a pre-order, it was already way above what we wanted to pay. Like paying a, um, it, when it came out, it was what, like 120 bucks, a hobby box or something least, like that. At least. Yeah. And that's just way too much. For yeah. I think it box. ended up going up to like 180 at one point. Yeah. Then, yeah. It did. The it other like, ones were I, like, what the jumbos were like 275 or something. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. You only get one auto on those hobby boxes, and before we paid like sixty dollars for a hobby box right. and gotten killed on it. Right. You're gonna yeah. pay one hundred and eighty for it, but I I like the design. Yeah. I wasn't. It wasn't like incredible. And Bowman for me has never really been like an amazing design, but usually it's pretty halfway decent. And I like some of the chrome parallels; those always look cool. And then the chrome on card autographs are always really nice. Yeah, there's yeah, no doubt about that. Just uh, nice stuff. But that craze was like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just absolutely nuts. Like people were going, yeah, yeah, people were going yeah. crazy. I mean, you still, we still can walk into a, like a, a Walmart or something like that, and we'll see the display box still, even a Bowman with 
nothing, nothing in it, in and you're just like, how many <laughs> weeks has that been there <laughs> sitting empty? I mean, it was probably picked up uh, the first day it was put out in about, you know, the first hour. Even now, I don't think you can find Bowman on a Harley Lady retail shelves anymore. So the craze of Bowman led right into the mega boxes, which last year were just unbelievably hot on fire i didn't even know about them and then next thing i know they're going for like 100 bucks a piece 120 150 and they cost what like 15 dollars in the store uh 2018 there was a crazy hunt for mega boxes everywhere that was just another thing that kind of took the hobby by storm uh did you guys uh partake in that hunt for 2018 boma mega boxes we did. We didn't. We don't have a lot of targets really close to us, so we didn't actually find any at targets. But we bought a couple off eBay for a decent price, and then opened one of them. Yeah, we sa- okay, saved so. one of them for yeah you know, the future. But yeah, that that's kind of a fun product for fifteen bucks. If you know you could buy them at Target for that, definitely a real fun rip. Um, you know the the only thing uh, that seems a little bit. Uh, you know, difficult or uh, maybe not difficult, but uh, disappointing. Disappointing, yeah, it's probably a better word. Uh, is that you, you don't get any parallels out of the Bowman base packs, uh, but uh, you still get the base cards. Uh, and then in the Mojo packs or the Chrome Refractor packs, those are really nice. It's definitely what people are trying to you know chase out of there. And this year they had a lot of on card autographs in the base and parallels of those, so I thought that was really cool. The year before I think it was mostly stickers, so yeah, that was nice. Yeah, and I think the Mojo stuff is pretty interesting. And again, if you can find them at fifteen bucks a piece, it's well worth it. Um, oh yeah, because oh, yeah, the cards sure. are beautiful and there are a lot of parallels and autographs. They're not. You know, if you found like four of them, you're probably going to get an autograph or two or a, yep. a really yep. good parallel, you know, but you're buying it for those uh, mojo packs, you know, the regular Bowman, like you said, that's just a stack of base, which, you know, could be a good thing if, you know, some of the sure. first Bowman guys um, end up being great players. But the biggest problem is finding them in a target that that little tough yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, really that tough. yeah, it seems like I think this year, even more than last year. Um, everybody was kind of on that judge craze last year. Now with Otani, it just seemed like everybody's even that much, almost like they're camping out at yeah. their targets, getting you know well, the, ready to raid the, the shelves. The difference was that this year people were aware of it before it came out, whereas last right. year people really didn't know yeah, about didn't it know before about it, it came yeah. out. So people weren't really looking for them. Yeah, and you made a mention of Judge. I remember last year thinking, man, this is insane how crazy popular products are. I was like, ah, at least next year will be easier. Little did I yeah. know. Nope. Yeah, had, right, right. You had the Otani chase, and things will get worse, uh, I think, in the second half of the year as more and more rookies, um, high-quality yeah. rookies, enter products. Yeah. But after that, Tier 1 came out. Tier 1 is a product. I, I like buying some of the singles once in a while. That's probably the only product this year that I actually didn't open any of. Um, I don't even think I did a a group break or anything like that either. Um, You know, I think it's a decent product. It's just some of the breaks I did watch looked kind of tough. Yeah, it it's it seemed we we I don't think we've ever opened a box or been part of a group break of tier one, but we all we watch every product that comes out. And it looked like one of those products where, like, one or two boxes a case, you'll get some good stuff, and then everything else is kind of meh. But the cards look nice, yeah, the cards and the on card nice, autographs yeah. are really cool. And some, like, they have, like, silver and gold ink, kind of yeah. like Inception. Those cards look really sweet. Some of the patch autographs, like bat knobs and stuff, are incredibly yeah. awesome. Those yeah. are impossible to pull. But yeah, for the think, price, yeah, those bat knobs are like one of those. If you pull one of them, you're doing you're doing all right. Like right. Kind of a holy grail card. card yeah, for yeah, it is kind of, it's kind of an interesting ball. product. It's 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 a uh, a little pricey. I mean, obviously the Otani, um, you know, cards that were in there bumped the product way up. Um, but if you could get it at what it you know was probably listed at in the pre buy, you probably did all right 70 but, bucks yeah 70 bucks but then they went up to like 115 120 yeah that's just so too much that's just for too a much product like that yeah yeah there's you know it's like every product but the problem with stuff like tier one is you're buying those two cards or whatever you get yeah. Yeah. so yeah. it's like if you hit the two five dollar cards you're like all right well 
that was a punch in the gut, and it's not like you have right, any base. Right. You don't have any rookies to put aside, speculate on, or anything like that. So no. that's that's the issue with products like that. What about a pro debut? You guys mess with that at all? This is the first year we that we did. Um, we we had seen them before, and I don't know if we watched a lot of breaks or just seen the product. Um, but probably we opened a few packs. Yeah, we probably but... opened up a few packs before. But this year we bought two. Was it two hobby boxes? I think so, maybe. Yeah, two. Yeah, two. And uh, we were actually really liked it. It was fun because we know a little bit about the minor leagues, but this really got us engaged more in you know who these teams are, where they're located. We had to actually print out a, a sheet that you know said where the teams are located. So it actually, was, I kind of liked it. I think yeah, we'd do more of that. They in the had I, one thing that I really liked about the proc. The, the card design was same as Series One. It was okay, and then the card, the actual like quality of the card isn't too great it's kind of like opening day quality but one thing that i really loved about the product was that they didn't have a lot of plain jersey relics they had like we got a relic that was a piece of a game used base yeah. and then they had like championship banners pieces of that and pieces yeah. of like fence. outfield fence yeah. and wall just some cool things like that which That's i thought that so... was a really cool inclusion in a product like that yeah they definitely make it fun and that's kind of the product where you can chase the uh tim tebow rookies <laughs> yeah not yeah, rookies yeah. but uh base cards yep. which uh you know it's kind of neat it's kind of a uh, fun thing i guess to follow um you know i think pro debut is a it's a cool product it's a product that um i think helps represent like the entire country you know there's so many teams represented all right. the smaller towns and stuff and i, I think that's yeah. pretty neat you know it's not a product that's going to be for everyone but it's pretty affordable i think it's like 60 bucks maybe even cheaper yeah. for a box so it's it's definitely yeah. not not terrible no yeah definitely and it, it is fun too i mean once again you if you're not familiar with the teams you can kind of look up where they're at and see who they're affiliated with and then kind of it just gives you a better appreciation of you know baseball in general and how the how the system's set up so yeah definitely fun uh to open but also gives you a little more insight into baseball um you know and how the system's yeah. set up how about 2018 tops finest i uh i said this in the break that i did online and it it baffled me that that product was 25 years old quarter century i mean yeah. it's something that uh luke over there you know in his yeah. entire existence, you know, Top's finest to Top's finest has just been a thing. But uh, yeah. right, right. You know, for me, I I was a little kid when Finest came out for the first time in '93, and I was that was like one of the first like super premium card. Yeah. And you know, it's a product I've always followed, and they've over the years had some major hits where the cards look great, and they've had some misses where the cards are kind of eh. That's the best you could do, but uh. I right. think this year's was really nice. I've been a fan over the recent uh, last few years. I love the autographs. Um, I think some of the the um, veterans they put in there, you know, that can be a little tougher to pull, but some of the case hits are just generally beautiful cards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we pulled one of the case hit, the finest hour autographs, and those are incredible looking cards. The actual rate, just the regular <laughs> autographs are really sweet on card autos. I really like those. And the parallels this year yeah, really the color pop. They nice. look awesome. Yeah. It is a little tougher to pull a bigger name, but it is kind of fun. Like we pulled a Chris Taylor autograph. They include some different veteran autograph subjects, and you'd see in some other products. So that's kind of cool too. Yeah. yeah I what, found, what? No, I was just gonna say you mentioned Chris Taylor, and he was one of those guys you were watching in the postseason last year. You're like, you know, this guy's not a superstar. He's not a future Hall of Famer, but. This dude's a good player, and it, it's kind of nice to see guys yeah. like that represented who aren't, you yeah. know, up and coming prospect you've never heard of, and they're not, you know, maybe a superstar. Yeah, the 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 one thing with with finest that can be tough if you're buying it at one thirty five, one forty a box, you know, there it's hard to get good autographs out of there, so um, it can be kind of tough on on the on the wallet. But uh, the cards are really beautiful, and the the inserts I think were nice this year and in the parallel, the color parallels, I don't know, something about them. You, you hold them and look at them and it's real, they shine and have, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, desirability and, you know, collectability. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the, um, color parallels that sort of match up with the uniforms, but I was looking at some and the green parallels. So I was like, I don't know what it is about this green parallel, but it's just so bright. I just couldn't stop looking at it. I was like, man, these yeah, colors yeah. are, the these colors are awesome. 
Yep. But yeah, finest. See, that's a thing. If it when it the price it comes out for originally before it bumps up, it's not bad. But once it starts creeping up, like you mentioned, where they start, I think at one point they might have hit like one fifty. I think they came down a little bit after the Otani yeah, they, um, yeah. injury, but you know, just crazy. But I think it's a nice product. I, I think it's a product that I've always enjoyed. It's one of those that I always look forward to as well. Uh, after that, you had Series Two. So not a whole lot to say about Series 2, very similar to Series 1. But the thing that I think surprised people was, you know, we knew Otani was going to be in it, but Ronald Acuna and uh, Glaber Torres as variations kind of came as a surprise. So that was something to uh, chase down a little bit. Yeah, that was a big chase. That was a really good inclusion by Topps to put those guys in because they didn't really have a rookie card yet. And those, if either of those guys turn out to be big superstars, those cards are going to be kind of the it card that people are going to yeah. chase. Kind of like the Otani image variation out of Heritage. Those, that's kind of going to be the base rookie card that people are going to look for because it's a short print, hard to pull, but nice looking card for the... Yeah, they, they, they did a good job with series two. The, the photography was good on it as well. They yeah, had... they put better photography yeah good good action shots in it and you know the checklist is always tough because they have some of the lower uh tier guys the you know role playing uh positions and players so um yeah overall it it can be uh, a little bit more difficult as far as you know collecting the base set if you're looking for all the big names but yeah they, they did a good job with it i think yeah, I liked it. Yeah, and I was surprised Torres and Acuna were in there. I really expected them to be held out for update, but yeah, I'm all right yeah. with it. I know there's varying degrees, um, there are varying thoughts on that. Some people are kind of would rather them have just been base cards, but they were late inclusions, and that's why they were, you know, um, put in there at that point as a as more of a variation, a short print, but. You know, I think it's a nice product. I didn't think the silver packs were quite as nice. Um, I thought oh. Series 1 were a little better, but, you know, it is what it yeah. is. Most people don't even know what the silver packs are because they're just buying, you know, blasters from retail right, stores. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, the, the silver packs were kind of rough. They didn't have – they had a few pretty good names, but they didn't have the yeah. same as Series 1. No, Series 1 silver packs had a lot of bigger names. The The one thing about the Series 2 set that was a little bit weird was the – two cards that had um well, that were missing out of the set but then there were duplicate numbers of, of uh two yeah. of the cards so kind of a, a little goof up by tops there yeah, and but, i think they just straight out acknowledged that at some point in social media like yeah we messed up yeah yeah, yeah. they did yeah so, so that's obviously bit... so, you know someone was asleep uh during the proofreading yeah. session i guess <laughs> right right so you yep. put it put together a set and then you have two of the same number but you're missing another number and yeah if you're not aware it can be a little bit of a head scratcher but so we've people... um we've praised quite a few sets you know we've talked about how much we like tops uh the beauty of heritage gypsy queen being uh you know really kind of a stunning set this year the higher end things but i don't know if anything has come as more of a surprise to me um than stadium club I mean, Stadium Club, I always know what to expect. I know they're going to be nice cards. They're going to be enjoyable cards. But, like, they're not super, you know, they're kind of like mid-end. They're not super yeah. cheap, but they're not expensive. And, you know, they never get a ton of hype. I mean, they did way back in, like, 1992. Uh, yeah. But in 2018, it just kind of comes out. And to me, they're just like, I had so much fun Um broke two boxes of it with my dad we were just opening it we didn't hit any big autos or anything um but it was just fun to open i mean like every pack i'm sitting there staring at these cards i'm like holy like these yeah. the photographs are amazing the brightness just you know i don't know maybe it's just me but i just think they're just unbelievable yeah, no, I, I i agree i think they did a great job and i think it's becoming one of our more favorite sets it's one of my it, favorites it is is uh yeah it, the photography is great and they have different subjects on it you know they have so they'll have nolan ryan they'll have hank aaron and they have you know today's hot rookies and uh yeah they did a good job with it and you get the two on card uh, autographs which um, look really if you collect somebody i would strongly suggest buying a stadium club autograph if you're looking because yeah. there's some of the cool if, especially if you like the picture because there's some of the coolest looking cards 
And this year, I think they like up the glossiness to the cards, so that makes the picture pop even more. Yeah, which I think was a really yeah. Nice I was touch. sitting there thinking to myself, I was like, you know, I, I don't really put together many sets at this point, but I kind of want to put together the entire set and toss it in an album because they're just so nice yeah. looking. Yeah, and, yeah. We, uh, you know, as someone who collects slab cards, I start looking at. I didn't really like evaluate whether they're worth, but I was like, dude, I might send in some of these base cards, just try and get some gem tens and just keep them in the holders. I think they look great in there too. Like that yeah. set is just. I want to buy more of it. I'm hoping it stays at a reasonable price. I mean, I know yeah. if you guys decide to open any more, it's all downhill from the first pack for you guys with how uh, how you guys right. started. it. But right, right, yeah, our first yeah. pack was pretty good. We we did order uh, another box. I think we we just broke our third box that we'll have up yeah. on our channel. But um, yeah, we're the same way. We we really uh, enjoyed it and want to pick up some more. We're trying to complete the set. We put it in a binder last year and hopefully we'll, we'll do it again this year. This year and yeah. yeah, it's one of those ones that you can just look through in your binder and, you know, kind of take it in. And for those who don't know, uh, you can check out the YouTube channel, what they did in their first pack, pull a Glaber Torres on card auto. So yes. that was, uh, that was a pretty epic hit to, uh, to kick off the stadium club. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Especially in stadium club, it's a 96 card autograph checklist so there's yes. a lot of autos and a lot of lower yes. uh, and names you so. can hit the big names and if you do they're worth a good bit of money because the cards are so cool looking but they're pretty much impossible to pull yeah yeah i checked out the checklist as soon as it hit and i always like i'll browse the checklist and then i'll like search it i always search see what kind of what phillies are in it and then i'll search certain players the big rookies and stuff and i know the phillies had like five base autographs not to mention like inserts and you had like hoskins which you would expect and jp crawford but they had aaron altair who um who has some ability, but he's hitting about 170 this year. So I was like, yeah, I don't know if he needs to be in that set. And they had <laughs> yeah. a reliever. So, you know, right. for like as a fan and a collector of that team, that's cool. But like, I wouldn't want to pull those guys because I know I could just buy yeah. them for like three bucks. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So Stadium Club was a pleasant surprise, an absolutely beautiful product. Um, to me, the most disappointing product of 2018 is Topps Inception. Now, the base cards are wonderful looking. The autographs, they look cool. The cards are great looking. But the checklist to me is, I want to say, maybe even pitiful. Like, it really gets on my nerves. Like, I really didn't like that checklist. Um, and this is a product that was supposed to come out in April. If it came out in April, I'd probably live with it. But it got delayed a couple months. And when you see a product get delayed that much, I sat there and went, oh, maybe they're going to toss in a few Acuna, Torres, you know, some of the younger rookies, even if they're redemptions. And, like, I just look at that checklist. It's not even a, an Otani base autograph. He has a patch autograph. Oh. Like, yeah. yeah. And, like, there's just so many bad names. And, again, I'm going to go back to the Phillies because that's what I know well. But, like, you know, they have Reese Hoskins, which is fine, and J.P. Crawford, which is fine. And then on top of that, like, they have Jorge Alfaro, who had a lot of autos last year. And, you know, at least he's a starting player yeah. in the big leagues. But they love putting those second-year guys in there. But then they have Roman Quinn in there. I don't know what you guys know about Roman Quinn, but here's what you need to know about Roman Quinn. Got called up in 2016, played a little bit. Played pretty well in the majors. Looked like most likely a fourth outfield type of guy. And then he spent all of 2017 in the minors slash on the DL. And he spent all of this year on the DL and the minors. Why in the hell is Roman Quinn in this set? Roman Quinn's right. had cards for years. Like that's an automatic $1.50 card. And most likely yeah. it's going to be bought by someone in Philadelphia who's buying it as a joke for someone else in Philadelphia. Yes. Yeah. The, the set... It, the cards, I agree. The cards look really awesome. I agree. I was disappointed when I looked at the checklist, especially how difficult it is to pull just a decent autograph. Not even a good one, but like yeah. a decent, even if it's like a veteran like that or second year player, it's so hard to pull a decent second year veteran autograph. To pull a lower name rookie or second year player, it's like every boxer in there. But I saw case breaks where they're getting like, Besides their case hits, they're getting maybe one decent autograph in the whole case, and then everything else was Roman Quinn type players. 
Nothing yeah, a lot else. of lot of pitchers in that set too, which usually yeah. don't typically hold huge value. And you know, you right. said it you said it well, Luke. You know, you see a case break. I think there's sixteen sixteen yep. Uh, yep. box yep. cases, and there's like maybe one card that's worth the price of a box. I mean, that's just to me unacceptable. Yeah. And you know, I'm a defender of tops, but I really think the checklist in you know is really rough. That product, like. Yeah. I'm recommending people go out and buy Tops Inception. I'm just saying go buy the base cards because the boxes you are going to get hammered on those things. Yeah, we we were we were able to get them cheap. Uh, some I don't know we had eBay bucks or some some or eBay coupon know. or something. So we were able to buy them for under fifty bucks a box. But if we didn't, boy, that would be real tough because I mean that like you said, the base cards are beautiful. But I don't think we got a card them. worth over fifteen dollars of those three yeah, boxes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's real tough. So, I mean, you know, I'm just going to tell it like it is. I like the cards, but the checklist is pathetic. Right. So it, it might is. sound harsh, but you know, I'm just, they could have, you know. they could have done a better job with it. There's no it, doubt about that. At least get a few guys that are, you know, are yeah. somewhat desirable. You gotta, you can't put Robert Zellman in, you know, four, four autos per case and you yeah. know, stuff if like they, that. If they had an Acuna or a Torres in there, that was kind of a little more short print, but they had him in there. That that was like a chase thing. People would be probably a lot more excited about Topps Inception because you had the potential to get those guys autographs and autograph patches and stuff, especially since it got delayed two months. Yeah. But, uh, As a stickler for on-card autos, that's the other thing that always bothers me with Inception is the patch yeah. autos. Like The patch autos, I don't know. yeah. I don't really want the sticker auto. Like If I get a decent right, one, right. I'm selling it and just buying the one without the patch that's yeah. on card yeah how the patches are very nice so i do like the yeah. patches they, they have some really nice patches, patches yeah. There. yeah they did use good patches but you know when it's a manny margot patch it's kind of yeah. like oh it's a nice patch but it's manny margot it's manny Mar- <laughs> right yeah <laughs> any place of the padres and no one in san diego knows who manny margot is most likely right. i'll right. probably get an angry comment from someone from san diego who's a big manny margot fan but you never know <laughs> all right so there's only a few other products that have recently come out since then museum collections come out that's a very pricey box you know you're looking at 200 200 it's another situation where you know, it can be tough to hit the big autos, but they are out there. You know, there's some just beautiful cards. The gold framed autos are amazing. Um, you know, I always think Museum's a nice product, but, you know, it's pricey. It's one of those, unless you can afford to uh, be spending a couple hundred bucks, it's one of those deals where maybe you want to get involved in a break, a case break yeah. for sure. Yeah. You have to yeah. watch, though. A lot of people like putting up those half case breaks, and I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I want my shot at the whole case, you know, for a team. You can still get skunked on the full case, but I feel like you have a better shot than with the half case. Sure. Yeah, but yeah there's definitely uh, that's a good way to yeah. get, you know get some cards for yourself if you go into a case break, but you had to buy a box. You know, can you know if you, yeah. you have the money set aside for it and you saved up for it, fine. But we we pretty to, much just buy singles. Yeah. You know, if we see a patch auto that we like or a patch card, we'll buy it. But I I'll buy the base cards of it because they're always really nice looking and the sketch cards are always cool. But never really gotten really big into museum collection. How about uh, Tops Definitive? You guys ripping a case of that stuff, or did you not win the lottery? Slightly out of our price range yeah. at the current like thousand dollars a box. Those cards so, were amazing looking last year, and uh, I, I did um. I got in a few like draft breaks. I think I did oh, yeah. three draft breaks, which is still pretty pricey, like a hundred bucks a spot. Yeah. And the one I did, I got like an Alex Bregman patch autograph, and it was awesome looking, such a beautiful card. And then I did another one. I took two spots in one. Bo- I guess it was a box break, but you know you're guaranteed a hit. It's just six people, and oh, I yeah. got they randomized the spots and I got spots five and six and I just banged my head on the desk. I was like, well, I'm getting the two relic cards. <laughs> I forget yeah. who I even got, but took a hit there, but those cards are awesome. I think they yeah. actually just released today uh, yeah, at the time did. of this recording. So that's one that I'll look into um, in terms of buying some singles. Cause those cards are wonderful, but you yeah, know, we watched the break today and the cards look just as good as last year. Yeah, They're really it's nice just one of those. Yeah, you can't they, break. I guess really, it depends really if you have uh if you're, sitting on you know a mound of gold coins right, go yeah, buy right. some and break it for fun but otherwise right, you know, right, right. It's uh, more of probably a can't do that yeah. now 
no, most of us can't afford to do that. And but they do look nice. And I, I think really when you look at most of the boxes, at least last year, it looked like there was a lot of value in them. Yeah, so, there was always. It seemed like there was always a really good card in every box. Yeah, or a really cool looking card or a different. Yeah. They have a lot of dual autos in there, which I think is cool, where you get kind of a different combination of people that will sign in. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, they're they're definitely cool to uh, just follow and look up. And, you know, if you wait, like, probably in the next week or two is when a lot of them will get broken and there'll be a lot on eBay. So there might be some yeah. deals to be had um, yep. auction-wise if there's a player or a team that you PC. So Definitive is a beautiful-looking card. But it's another one of those things I feel like a lot of people in the hobby don't even know it comes out because yeah. it's not right. on their radar because it's just no. so absurdly priced. Yeah. Uh, another product that actually just released is Bowman Platinum. Um, that is a retail exclusive. It's, I believe, only in Walmarts. And I don't know if you guys are much into it. I know last year that was real hot because I think it was the first product that Cody Bellinger was in. I think it actually came yeah. out a little earlier yep. than now. But, yeah. you know, I'm I'm not – it's kind of like the rest of the Bowman products. It's, you know – it's very prospect heavy, so it doesn't appeal to me as much. But I'll probably check out a box or so if you can find it in the store. At yeah, like twenty yeah, we, bucks for a blaster. We liked it. The collector's box last year, which is I don't know around seventy dollars. I want to say. Yeah. Considering how expensive everything else is and was back then, it was a pretty good value for what you got. And the cards are really nice looking last year. Yeah, the year. cards look nice. I haven't. I maybe have seen a couple pictures, but. I think the cards are going to look nice again this year. Yeah. But it, we probably won't get any until another week, I would guess. Just yeah, it just on depends on what it restocked, yeah, it's just restocked. But, yeah. but yeah, they, they, yeah, they were good. It was yeah. a good value last year, and yeah, I thought they did a good job with that. And we'll see what, what this year's holds. I don't, I'm not sure if it'll be as good in, uh, or not. Yeah. So that's kind of our thoughts on the products that have been released to this point in the early portion of July, you've already had all those products come out. There's an, at least another 18 products still to come. Do you guys have an actual favorite? Can you name a favorite to this point, or are there just groups of them that you really like? To this point, for me, the top two would be Heritage and Stadium Club. Those would be my two favorites that have come out so far. Yeah, I would say I'd say probably yeah Heritage, and I'd say Stadium Club. I think I'd agree with those those two. Those are my favorites as and well. I think finest for me would be a close third. That'd be yeah. Finest yeah I was, my... I was, you know, I agree. I think Heritage has been great. I am big on the Gypsy Queen. I think they were. Uh, I just love those base cards, but that Stadium Club was definitely like the most kind of surprising. I don't want to say shocking because you expect nice product at Stadium Club, but yeah. I still can't get over those. You know, the photographs, the use of them, just the cards, just. They look so great in person. I mean, they look better in your hand than they do on a screen or, yeah. you know, on a picture on a website or your phone or whatever. But Finest is fun as well. Still a lot to come. Uh, we've already been chatting for around an hour. So I just want to spend a, a brief amount of time, you know, kind of talking a little bit about these products still coming out. One that's coming out very shortly, coming out uh, really soon, is Topps Big League. I don't know if you guys have looked into that at all. It's a product that's supposed to be geared more towards kids to new collectors, younger collectors. Uh, it's a pretty big set, but from what I've seen, the pictures, I actually think the cards look pretty neat, and I think the checklist is actually really good. You have Acuna and Torres in there. You have Otani and Devers and Hoskins. You have all these rookies on that checklist. Um, so I think there's a lot to, uh, a lot to look forward to in that set. I, again, I don't know if you guys have looked into it at all, but I yeah, think it it's a pretty like impressive it. set and it's something that's like 40 bucks a box, probably hard to get right. a hit, but I yeah, think it's, we'll, you know, we'll, nice. We'll probably try a box of it. I, I think I heard it's going to be kind of kind because they're not making bunt this year, but it's going to be a little like that, except a little better. And I think it could be a kind of a cool product, kind of, step above opening day almost more in the middle of the season kind of, could be a kind of a fun product yeah yeah the, yeah i looked at it once and that was it and i still don't know as much about it as i should so i can't say much but it'll be fun to try and see once yeah. uh, what they do with it and if uh you know like you're saying mike the checklist looks good um mm -hmm. That's definitely a bonus, and I guess if they have to start it off, you might as well start it off with a bang and, and you know get people interested in it. If it if it doesn't do well right away, it's going to be a product they'll you know have a hard time 
uh, putting out next year. So yeah, I just think it it's well. good to have a product that's very affordable for all collectors where you can yeah, get, you sure. know, you know, yep. that might be a kid's chance, their first chance to get an Otani or a Glaber Torres rookie, you know, I, yeah. I, and I, and it's a pretty big checklist. So, you know, if you're a kid in, I don't know, Tampa Bay and you actually like the Tampa Bay Rays, then you at least have like 12 or 15 race cards because pretty much every other product, you're lucky if there's one, you know? Right, yeah, right, 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 exactly. Yeah, I agree. I think that's pretty cool. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out. Allen and Ginter's coming out in another couple of weeks, which is a product that I've always enjoyed. I love the base cards. Um, I'm not in love with this year's look, but again, that thought can change once they do come out. It's a sure. product I, I like getting the cards autographed myself. Um, I think Allen and Ginter can be tough to break because it's another product yeah. that's hard to get. I mean, there's only a couple autographs in a case. And right. not only do you get the relics, but you get the goofy relics, which some people like, but a lot of people yeah. don't want a sportscaster suit or part of their tie or, yeah. you know, right, some actor right. who's, you know, hasn't been in a movie in 40 years. <laughs> like, right. there's right. some, right. There's some the crazy fact. stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a interesting product. We haven't, we've never done a whole lot of it. It's not really our thing, but yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, we. I, I like some of the like before they've had like uh, old coins in there and like pieces of meteor. I know last year they had yeah, and yeah. pieces of dinosaur bone and stuff. Just funky yeah. stuff like that. I yeah, think that's so kind of cool. Yeah, but. it's kind of it's kind of fun. It's definitely a quirky set, um, but yeah, fun, a fun one. The to cards to usually collect. always look nice, though. Like yeah, I've the always cards liked are the base pretty cards. clean. And there's a there's a lot of these um, sets coming out. It's the same stuff. I and mean, Tops does it again. It's kind of a cheap way for them to get stuff out there because it's not a lot of manufacturing costs. But Tops Archive Signature Series uh, Active Player Edition. They're also making the Retired Player Edition. They're actually both sets I love. Now I don't necessarily recommend breaking them. I'll always break yes. a couple boxes just for fun. Yeah, um, yeah. but. You know, it's one of those that you have a you have a great chance of getting a five dollar auto and paying fifty, sixty dollars oh, yeah. for it. Oh yeah. But I yeah. love buying singles of them because there's just so many players, teams, different things I can pick up for my collection and you can get the singles. Like a lot of singles get dumped. So yeah. those two yeah. products will be back out again this year. I know you guys did some of them last year if I remember right. Yeah, we yep. bought some on Black Friday for really cheap and uh, yeah, they're, they're fun, fun. fun to open up and yeah, like you said, you can really take a hit if you spend fifty bucks and get a five dollar. But you auto, can get but... some really cool looking like single autographs of just yeah. different cards that you probably wouldn't like see or pull otherwise. Right. But some right. really cool looking uh, stuff, and especially since they're all encased, I think that's really cool. Yeah, and they do the same thing with Clearly Authentic, which was a cool looking set last year, but I don't think it really caught on. I was actually a little surprised that they actually announced it again for this year. Um, some yeah. of the uh, they did like reprints, but acetate versions of different, you know, kind of old right. rookie cards. I thought yeah, those were pretty neat. Um, so I think that's a cool set. I mean, there's just so many things to, you know, to look forward to with all of that. Uh, Tops Luminaries is another expensive set. Those are always nice. They'll be coming out. Diamond Icon, same thing. But I, I think the product that most um, in the hobby are looking forward to and kind of anticipating is at the beginning of August. Uh, 2018 Topps Chrome Baseball. There's, It's certainly going to be an expensive hobby box. It's going to be an expensive jumbo box. And I think it's going to be one of those products that if you're not the first one at your local Target or Walmart, well, you yeah. might be out of luck because I feel like yeah. those boxes are going to get bought up like crazy. And I, yeah. I think this has got to be one of the more anticipated sets of 2018, especially because yeah, sure. when it's coming out, now, I don't know that Juan Soto, the Nationals, 19-year-old phenom, I don't know that he'll be in it because Topps actually posted a picture of an archives card to him and said something uh, to, to the effect hmm. of being his first pack-pulled rookie card. Okay. And that comes out a couple weeks later. But yeah. there's no doubt that Torres is going to be in there. Acuna is going to be in there. You're going to have Otani. And then all these guys like Hoskins and Devers and 
others who seemingly almost get overlooked and forgotten about because right, right. They, they were like the guys in April and then all these other guys have come since. Um, yep. Yeah. But Topps Chrome, you know, that's one always year to year. is like one of the rookies to have It's the yep. autograph rookie card to have. It's the parallel, the rainbow, all that. Are you guys, uh, you guys fired up for Topps Chrome? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We're super one. excited. Yeah. We had a ton of fun last year. It was the first case that we that we'd ever broke and it was a ton of fun. The cards looked awesome. This year there's actually a soccer product that came out that we opened that had the same design as the baseball cards they're gonna have. And the parallels and autographs and that stuff looked awesome. Yeah, they they look looked good. really cool. The parallels popped really well. Yep. And some the just the card design looked really nice. Yeah, so think, I'm really excited to see it'll be a nice set. It'll be a nice set. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see what some of the insert sets are. Every year it kind of changes, so yeah. it'll be kind of cool to see some of the insert sets. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun once that checklist drops, and it's gonna be fun to break. I'm sure at times it could be heartbreaking to break when you you know. Yes, yes. yeah. I think get, right now you get a certain auto, but I mean, yes, right right now the hobby boxes I think at pre sale are like one thirty five for a hobby and then two forty for a jumbo. So and what's I it mean, auto wise? It's like two and five, right? Two, right? Yeah. Yep, exactly. So uh, and. Yeah, it, it's pretty hard once again to get you know one of the bigger name rookie autographs in a box. So yeah, it can be a little brutal. It's but. tough, but the good thing is, and even though those prices are outrageous, at least Topps Chrome is one of those where you have the chance for the big you know yes. big time rookies. But beyond yes. that, you do get base cards that have some value. You do get yep. inserts. You do get parallels, the rainbows. Yep. I mean, you know, if you get you know uh, Glaber Torres gold or something even if it's not autographed yes. i mean it's still a big yeah. card so you yeah, you know exactly. you have a chance for that stuff but yeah you know, it's gonna be a other, lot of fun i that's yeah. gonna be one of those where you're gonna see people are gonna be cleaning out the um the retail boxes quick because i remember last year doing okay in some retail boxes yeah, it wasn't it, it, it wasn't bad and especially when you factor yeah, in i, I you actually know. think it got better and that's the other kind of cool thing about it. Is last year, you could get like super fractors and stuff out of retail. So you still had the chance to pull a really big card out of retail. So yeah, and, if you, cool. and if you buy a dozen retail boxes and 20 bucks a piece, I mean, that's not right. really any more than buying a jumbo box. Right, so. right, right, right. Yeah, so that's going to yeah. be crazy. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's got to be the most anticipated product of this year, I would think, um, you know, kind of across the board. So. That will be what people will be looking forward to. But there's other stuff. Heritage High Numbers, I don't know if you guys noticed, they actually moved that up this year. I think that's like mid-August. Yeah. That used to come out kind of at the end of the season or after the out, season. I want to say it came out in September or October last year. It wasn't in August. Yeah, yeah it wasn't in August. Yeah. It, it's pretty early this year, and that'll, that'll be a nice set. You'll have some nice additions. You'll have... Uh, you know, I would again think Torres and Acuna, Juan Soto. So, I mean, there'll be a lot of rookies in that. And again, that's you know still a popular set. It's not as popular as the regular Heritage, but right high number will be something to look at look out for. I think Topps Archives this year is actually going to be really popular. And the prices, I haven't looked at the details, but I think I looked one day when there was one of those eBay deals, and I thought I saw like Archives were like a hundred and forty a box or something. And I was like. I didn't yeah, know if that was right or if it was just one guy with no competition, but yeah, I think I think they're like one one fifteen, one eighteen a okay. box. Like, I mean, that's yeah, a little so. more like it, but they used to be like seventy five. Like, right, right, right. Yeah, that can be kind of a tough product because it's all usually mostly uh, uh, older veteran players and like older old timer autographs instead of like the new rookies. You have the chance to pull the new rookies, but they're a little harder to pull usually. Yeah. And so it, it's a little tougher value wise, and at one forty a box, that would definitely be a yeah. The, this year, the thing problem. that's I think going to be popular is the Sandlot oh, has yeah. uh, autographs, I believe, in it, and uh, I don't know insert cards or something like that. So that'll definitely be a, yeah. A I remember a few years product. ago, what was it twenty fourteen or fifteen? I forget one of those years where they had. Um, the major league cards were real yeah, popular. Yeah. Like Charlie Sheen autograph was like five hundred dollars or something. Right, I was like, right, oh, right. Lord. Yeah, every but, year archives tries to come out with something like that and give a big chase to it, and it seems seems to have worked for. Yeah, them. yeah it's always a set I enjoy because I like seeing some of the older designs, and I actually, again, I'm not saying I want to pull them. I'd rather pull a big time one and go buy 
the uh, autos for like three bucks, but I like right. the checklist usually. It's a lot of uh, good throwback names that aren't typically in yeah. other products. It's not like right. the same guy that's in like 14 different products. So I always yeah. find that to be a, a fun product. But usually Archives yeah. comes out a little earlier. That's usually like a June product and yeah, yeah bumped it back yeah. quite a bit. So yeah, we'll see back. how it does. Believe it or not, there's still more products. Uh, you have Bowman High Tech and Tops High Tech. Those products are okay. I feel like they've kind of, I don't know. I feel like their heyday might have come and gone. I don't know. Maybe yeah, you guys yeah, disagree. I'm agree. not. High Tech Baseball a couple years ago wasn't bad. Um, but I don't know. I just feel like Bowman Tech is totally an unnecessary product. Yeah. But... I, I don't. I don't like Bowman Tech, and then the Topside Tech I actually thought were pretty cool last year. I like the cards, but at the price that they were at, I I don't remember yeah, what they, they were. They were crazy. way too high. They were, they were like one hundred twenty-five bucks a box. And the Bowman, the Bowman High Tech were really hyped up last year, and then when they came out, they people were kind of like, eh. yeah. I mean, it's just a clear card with the autograph on it. The autographs, yeah, are, generally of a guy who's sitting in Double A or Triple A or something yeah. like that. So right. and. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's kind of an unnecessary product. Yeah, Five Star, that comes out later this year as well. Another one of the higher-end things. Another popular set. Uh, one that's I've very rarely broken. I, uh, I've i actually done well in the past doing some group breaks. I got a Sandy Koufax uh, Rainbow Auto out of one of them a few years ago, oh, so that was pretty sweet. Pretty but awesome. um, Five Star is awesome, but that's another one that you're probably better off just buying singles. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's a pretty tough break, but yeah, it's, I would uh, say it's, like it's a cool set for sure. Bowman Chrome yeah, will be popular. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, the Bowman Chrome cards are pretty cool. They're now way over, like every year. It seems like they come out <laughs> and then they go <laughs> up like up $50 up dollars up. Yeah. every year at least. And it's kind of crazy, honestly, for what you get out of there. I don't see the value usually because the, Usually the names in there really aren't like they they yeah. put a few really good names in, but usually the names aren't they're that great. Yeah, and then some yeah. of the guys you won't even know about. Like five years from now, the card will be like eight hundred dollars, and someone will have it thrown yeah. in a common box. Right, 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 and, right. And that and that's why that product goes up so much because it seems like every year Bowman Chrome, like for instance, like Cody Bellinger came out of that stuff, yeah. and that was a really big that I think he was in sixteen Bowman Chrome, and that stuff like skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, gold label will come out. Those are generally pretty nice. They were actually way nicer back in like the late '90s when they made them. But the framed autos are pretty cool. Uh, that's something that Tops is putting out again. So I always look forward to kind of keeping an eye on them. Maybe break a box or two for fun. Buy some. Yeah, it's a pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty it, pretty, pretty, pretty fun good. Product. Pretty good value. You get. A- they're usually pretty reasonable. Yeah, it's, it's tough to pull a good auto, but the cards usually look pretty cool, and then to get a framed autograph is pretty sweet. Yeah, the framed autos are definitely really nice. Um, so that, that'll that be cool. Heritage Minor Leagues is something there for the uh, – it's another product there for the minor league people out there. You get the cool heritage design. That's always – it's not a product that goes for a lot, and it's not something I mess with too much. Uh, but it's one of those things that's pretty popular. It's it's popular for like the random singles, like the random yeah. common cards. People love buying up lots of them to go around and get them autographed and stuff. So yep. Yep. it's yep. the type of product that a lot of people don't know about, but that's coming out. And then uh, Triple Threads comes out. Uh, I'm not personally a huge Triple Threads fan. I actually feel like it's coming out later this year than it usually does, but I don't follow Triple Threads that much. Yeah. I so. Th- I- I think it may not be that much later. I think it usually comes out about mid September. I okay. want to. Yeah, I, I guess I was mixing it up with something else. I don't know. Triple Threads. My biggest problem is is that it's just so sticker heavy, and that's what's always turned yeah. me off a little bit for a product that's not the, cheap. The cards, yeah, yeah, they they the stickers look decent on them. Like they usually do a pretty good job in kind of hiding the stickers, but. So, like some of the patches could be better, but some of the cards in there, like some of the book cards and like the possibility yeah. is like the white whales. Those are really cool. Yeah. It's really the only product that tops puts out that you can get some of that stuff. And, and I think that kind of drives the popularity in that. Yeah, product. I know it's definitely a very popular product. It's, you know, pretty cool. And then things will finally wrap up late in the year. You'll have uh also tops update come out. So that'll be uh yeah. 
That'll be fun. Just another 350 card set for the top space sets. Yeah, right, right, you'll, right. You'll get a few rookies in there, and it's something you have to look, you have to keep in mind, and you know, not kind of toss all the base cards. I was, right. uh, yeah, yeah. I kept thinking to myself, I, I didn't open a lot of it, but like 2014 update, I definitely opened some, and I'm like, I don't know what happened to all my Mookie Betts update rookie right. cards, but like, I right. feel like I sent them to someone, like it was a Red Sox fan, like just in a big lot or. Maybe <laughs> sold them for a dime with a bunch of other cards, so that was a mistake. Right, yeah. right. And you, I remember you could buy those boxes, maybe even last year, for really cheap jumbo boxes for like sixty bucks. Now they're I don't know, one hundred fifty bucks a box or more. And, and Mookie Betts um, cards are yeah. you know raw are going for thirty, forty bucks or the right uh, update card. So yeah, yeah, you you never know with that set. Yeah, Tops Update is one of those things that's become more and more popular, you know, with the emergence of some of these, you know, you look at like 2008, you have Clayton Kershaw and Max Scherzer that have gotten pricey, 2011 is just, it's become a legendary set with yeah, Black Trout really card has. and um, Jose Altuve, and then there's other guys, I think Rizzo, Anthony Rizzo might be in there, and a few other good players, it's just... You know, now people are sitting there kind of keeping an eye on updates. So it's one of those to pay a little attention to and don't give yeah. up on it too quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hang on to your stuff if you don't think it's going to, uh, you know, be something to sell right now, may, maybe later. So as you can uh, tell, there's a lot of products that have come out to this point. There's a lot of products to come out uh, beyond. Uh, I appreciate everyone listening. I appreciate Mike and Luke for uh, chatting for quite a bit over an hour talking about some of the products, some of the stuff we're looking forward to, our thoughts on some of the products. You know, obviously you can't afford to buy everything, so it's certainly important to do some research, kind of know what's coming out, what products, you know, might interest you the most. You know, as a collector, I like to collect a little bit of everything. I like to break certain things. I like to uh, buy singles of others. Uh, either way, a great resource is to check out the checklist when they come out, but also to watch breaks as they, you know, get released. It's always a great way to kind of get a feel for what you can expect in a box. So make sure you check out Up North Collectors. Mike and Luke will be breaking some of these products, I'm, I'm guessing you guys aren't breaking all of them, but yeah, not few all. Of them. <laughs> Hopefully, the, the ones we can afford will yeah. definitely be breaking. Yep. So I appreciate you guys taking some time to uh, join the show. Uh, hopefully, you guys had a good time chatting a little bit about 2018 yeah, baseball definitely, cards. Yeah, definitely. Thanks definitely. for yeah, having thanks for us having us on. on. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun, and yeah, we definitely like uh, talking about this stuff. And if you watch our channel on YouTube, you'll see. Uh, that you know, we break it, but then you know we try to do a little bit of research to to help uh, you know the collector too. So uh, we don't know everything, that's for sure. But we we try to at least get somewhat have educated. a general idea. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's part of the fun of collecting, I think. You know, to yeah. not just open up the cards, but know what's in the set and what you, what you can expect. And you can listen to this podcast. On YouTube, you can listen on iTunes or SoundCloud. Obviously, you're listening to it on one of those platforms, but make sure you're checking it out there. Head over to YouTube if you're there. Check out Up North Collectors and uh, be on the lookout for future videos from these guys, future videos from me. Maybe uh, we'll do a video all together, possibly in Cleveland, Ohio. We'll have to see. No promises, yeah. but you yeah, know, hopefully if everything works out, that would... Uh, That'll be something to look forward to in the future. Yeah. So, again, guys, appreciate you joining the podcast today. Well, thanks for yeah. having us. We we appreciate it as well. And, uh, yeah, definitely appreciate your channel, all the work you do on YouTube. It's uh, been a benefit to us. So we, we appreciate uh, yeah. your work there. No sure. problem. I uh, I definitely like to follow, you know, channels. There's a lot of great channels out there, and I think you guys were appealing right away because just your presentation's really good. Love the back and forth, kind of taking turns with things, uh, presenting some knowledge on the product. I think the father son duo is, uh, you know, something that's great for the hobby for sure. So everyone should go out and collect some baseball cards. And thank you everyone for listening. Talk to you next time. <laughs>